Hello, my name is Christopher Sturm. I am a professional film photographer and YouTuber. Some of you may know me from my YouTube channel, The Photo Department. I'm here to talk about my camera bag, what's in it, and what I bring to my professional film photography shoots. I booked this rad studio in Milwaukee's historic Third Ward to shoot some film and go through my kit. If you want to learn more about this peer space location and even book it, you can visit the link in the description below. The big key to what I do is simplicity. Photo shoots can be incredibly stressful. There are a lot of moving parts. There are a lot of people on set. So if there are less moving parts from my end and less things that I have to worry about, then it's going to be much more successful, much more stress-free shoot. First things first, let's talk about the bag itself. This is my Ona Camps Bay backpack. I decided to pull the trigger because these bags are just so nice and it's really been with me through quite a bit. It's pretty much just a camera backpack but it's just very smartly designed. It is made of this uh, really great waxed canvas material that is waterproof or at least water resistant. Uh, I've had it in rain several times, no problems. So diving into my bag, when you zip open the front compartment, everything is really there for me to see and grab really easily. My Chrome Nikon F2, one of my workhorses. These cameras are really incredible and were really used by photojournalists all around the world for a very long time because of their reliability, their functionality, uh, their adaptability, and the fact that you can beat the crap out of them and they're gonna keep going and uh, they're fully mechanical, which means no batteries to change, no electronics to fail. And of course I have two of them. I also have my black Nikon F2 with me. I bring both of these bodies to shoots because I like to put different lenses on each one. One of them will have my 50 millimeter 1.4. I also bring my 24 millimeter F2.8, which is a much wider field of view. It's the lens that I'm filming on right now, actually. I also have my Nikon 105 millimeter F2.5, which is a fantastic portrait lens, really great for product. It's a really fantastic lens, super underrated, and I can't believe how cheap I got it. Uh, hopefully after this video, prices don't go up. Next is something kind of uh, people don't really think about, maybe probably that often or don't talk about, but I have a strap. It is a rope strap that I got from Amazon for I think $12 and it's really cool looking but I keep this in my bag because sometimes I like to have two camera bodies on me while I'm shooting. I'll have one strapped over my shoulder and one in my hands. Next is the Olympus XA. This camera I made a video on recently. You can go to my YouTube channel to check it out if you'd like. I carry this camera with me pretty much everywhere. I own four. Uh, this one is always in my bag because sometimes on set there's some downtime. I want to take some behind the scenes photos or sometimes it lends itself to really good candids or sometimes it's just a different way to work. Now this next piece of equipment is something that I do think that every photographer should have in their kit regardless of what they're doing. This is something that every photographer can benefit from learning how to use and for having on them on any shoot that they're on and it is a light meter. This one is a Siconic. This specific meter is a incident meter as well as a spot meter. I use the spot metering more often when I'm outside shooting landscapes or I'm doing bigger scenes that I need to light more complex. For the most part, I'm using the incident meter. So I have this little pouch that I stick in the middle here. It's a tech pack from Moment actually. Uh, they make these cool tech pouches and I grabbed a bunch of them and they're really, really handy. This particular one, I keep a red Sharpie in to mark all my film rolls. I also keep a microfiber cloth, flash sync adapters for my film cameras. Uh, this has stuff that kind of cycles in and out of it depending on the type of shoot that I'm on, but I always have it on me and it's always 
tucked in there. It's like just a really great way to organize smaller things. Another thing that I think is something that a lot of photographers should carry with them, even if it's just to keep your phone charged up, I have an Anchor uh, power delivery battery pack. This thing is criminally inexpensive. I think it was like 20 bucks, but it can charge my iPhone 12 Pro Max, I think like four or five times before it's dead. They can also power other devices because it has power delivery. It's been indispensable and it's really inexpensive. And it's one of those things that in a pinch can actually save your life. Up here in the top part of the bag under the flap, I keep a few essentials. The first one being gaff tape. This one seems like a no-brainer, but there have been a million times where I've shown up on set and totally forgot any gaff tape, but you definitely need to bring gaff tape with you. If you're going to be on set, it's going to save your life. I keep saying that about the things that I bring with me, but I think it's really true about gaff tape. I choose white because it's highly visible on set, even if it's dark, and you can write on it, which is great for labeling things. So white gaff tape. You should get some. This is another really cool tech pouch that Moment makes, and this is probably the moment you've been waiting for, my film pouch. If I'm on a smaller shoot and I don't need to bring like, you know, 30 boxes of film with me, this is what I'll go for. It holds different types of film really easily. The type of film that's in this pouch will obviously rotate depending on the project that I'm working on. I have some Portra in here right now, some Ultramax. Uh, I have some Provia. 100F, which is a slide film I really love. I also have some Superia, of course. Shout out Extra Superia on Instagram. And a roll of Kodak Pro Image 100, which is one of my favorite 35 millimeter films. Just an easy way to keep my film organized and I can write with my red Sharpie on the film after I'm finished shooting it and then pop it right back in there. It's really, really fantastic. Keeps everything organized. I love it. Now, the last thing in my bag is the GoPro pouch. So sometimes I'll be on set and there'll be a moment or there'll be something happening where I'll think like, damn, I wish I had some BTS video of what's going on here because this is really cool. And uh, you know, I was tired of having that regret. So I bring this GoPro with me on my shoots now and I use it to grab BTS or I'll use it just to, you know, capture some moments that are happening on set to share later. Uh, I think it's really, useful to have. It's really kind of neat. Now, the more astute of you will probably notice that I've been sitting next to this beautiful, beautiful camera, the Mamiya RB67, and that is not a coincidence or that is not a mistake. This doesn't fit in my backpack, at least not when I have all my other stuff in here. So I'm going to show you what's in my other bag because usually I'm taking two bags to set when I'm doing a shoot or in this case, a bag and a Pelican case. And this is that Pelican case. It's waterproof. It has wheels. It's got a handle. You can lock it. Can you lock it? You can lock it somewhere. And it's pretty small for how much it can fit. All right, getting right into my Pelican case. Uh, first off, the beautiful Mamiya RB67. Uh, this is my main camera for editorial, lifestyle, any kind of magazine work. This camera was really popular in the 80s for fashion and uh, editorial photographers uh, for good reason. It is incredibly cool. It takes 120 film, which is medium format, and it shoots a 6-7 frame, which is about a 5 by 4 um, square or rectangle. The film back on the rear of the camera actually rotates, so you can choose landscape or portrait uh, orientation without having to actually turn the camera sideways. Currently mounted on my main body is a 90 millimeter lens, which is pretty much about a 45 or a 50 on 35 millimeter format. So it's gonna be a normal kind of focal length. It's a beautiful lens, I use it all the time. You'll see I have a second kind of naked RB67 body. This is pretty much my backup. I'm typically using a waist level finder when I'm shooting with an RB67, just cause there's not anything really like looking through a waist level finder into ground glass when shooting with film, it's really beautiful. But there are times where uh, having a prism finder is necessary and that's where this humongous beast comes in. This metal and glass behemoth is a prism finder that actually has a very accurate meter, 
So if I want to mount this to my camera, I can uh, use it at eye level, which is really helpful if you're shooting things up high. Uh, the only downside is it's massively heavy, so it's difficult to handhold, but it is a really fantastic thing to have uh, when you're shooting with this camera. I also have a 65 millimeter lens, which is about 35 millimeter, which is pretty much my favorite focal length to shoot with, especially when trying to show some context in the frame. Uh, this is a lens that rarely isn't attached to a Mamiya RB67 when I'm shooting. So I always have three backs with me. I have right now a regular 6x7 back, which shoots a 6x7 frame, a 645 back, which is uh, really great when I want to shoot 645 frames instead of a larger 67. Uh, this back allows me to shoot 16 frames instead of 10, which is actually really nice. And then I have this 6x9 back, which was made by Graflex. And uh, this back allows me to shoot 6x9 negatives, which are very big. And it's really cool. I really like it. It allows me to shoot only eight frames on a roll of 120. Another essential for any kit is my X-Rite Color Checker Passport. This thing is great. I recommend everyone has these in their in their bag, digital or film photographer. I also have some film in here. Uh, this is Kodak Ektar, a film that is often overlooked, underestimated, misjudged, misunderstood. And I love this film. I've loved it for a long time. I always have some in the fridge or in my bag. It's a great film. It's fantastic when you want really punchy, beautiful, saturated color. I know that the desaturated portrait look is really hot right now, but that is going to change at some point, I'm sure. And uh, Ektar will be there for you when you're ready for saturation and colors. Finally, the last thing that is really important to have in this kit is the cable release, the unsung hero of every medium format photographer's kit. This is a cheapish one that I got from Freestyle Photo in Los Angeles. Uh, cheapish because it didn't cost a lot, but not cheapish in construction. It's very well made. When you don't have it and you need it, you'll really be kicking yourself. So it always pays to have one in your kit. I could talk about gear honestly forever. And I will because I'll be back here on the Peer Space YouTube channel to talk about film photography gear, filmmaking, YouTube stuff all kinds of stuff. I guess I won't take any more time in this video. Uh, like I said in the beginning of this video, this is uh, the stuff that works really well for me. It is not by any means the uh, standard by which anyone should live by. Uh, if you think that what I'm doing is awesome and you think it might work for you too, awesome, you should try it. And if you have other gear that you think will work better for you, that's awesome. I just wanna impart that simplicity oftentimes is going to be the most helpful thing. Uh, I've definitely brought tons of gear with me onto sets before and regretted it. Thank you guys for watching. I will be back with more on this channel in the very near future. Can't wait to see you guys again. Goodbye.